All right. Coil reads good. I cleaned it. But let's do a quick compression test while I have everything out. All right. Spin it. Oh. Okay, something's going on. Something's happening. I'm not getting any compression. Okay, I want to do a tear down on this motor. This is the motor that <coughs> had no very little compression. So I want to do a tear down on it. And let's take a look and see what we got going on here spring there on the bottom, rod on the top, and notice the thermostat up here. Why does it seem like it's bent? And that goes, controls the choke. All right. And it should come right off, which it does. Way. That carp looks like I had rebuilt this car and I managed to get this thing together. Uh, it had some issues. And the guy lost the spring, and that was the one with the four penny nail doing its job in there. Now, can we get this out? Yeah. What different they are. Okay, you got that on there. This comes apart. Okay. So that's these guys. I'm gonna place this over here for now. The spin. A lot of times you can get them off. Well, let's see. Uh, this might be one of those motors that actually will come apart without too much trouble. Yeah, that's probably a good time to do it. See, that came right off. But the least we can do right now is take a peek at the valve, valve train again. But imagine all this is just going to come right apart. Okay. Let's see what I can do with one of these and see if there's any money in fixing this. Okay, so that's a long one. See, they're all the same. Top one, two tops are the same. Something's, something's kind of touchy there. We've got something going on there. Let's get a little liquid stench. First sign of trouble, huh? I wonder what's going on with that. Bottom. Let's pull this one out. That one came right out. Oh, we'll see. Let's run it in. See if that changes. Yeah, something's wrong. Well, it might just have lunched the block. Okay, you don't want to get it too hot because it's aluminum. Might have fucked up already. Let's turn the power up. Make sure the AC's on. The air compressor's on. I think it did damage the threads a little bit. A little bit. Okay, I don't know how a little bit, how bad a little bit is. Could be a lot of it, or a little bit, or a lot, a lot of it. Here we go. So 
so it'll need need a head gasket, that's for sure. I remember chunks came out. So is that push rod the same? Yeah, they're the same. That okay. There's a lot of carbon came off. This is a thick, huge, thick that's why carbon was coming out. This if this thing had ran, it would have blown out a lot of this carbon. So we need a gasket. Top around the corner might have it, but I have to see if I want to put in anything else. Wrong. There's a little bit of a score in here. Oh yeah, wait. It picked up some shit. Right here. It picked up a little bit of shit right here. And a little bit of shit right here. So, let's see if I can show you that. It's right in here. I can feel it. It's it's not that bad, but I can feel it. And that could just be junk. Or cylinder distortion, but what you want to do now is want to take off the rest of it. Okay, welcome back to the Naked Mechanic. Oh, wait, that's not it. Uh, that's for my other channel. For the ladies. All right, no. Uh, this is back with the OHV overhead valve engine, the little the little guy, and I got everything cleaned up. Well, not everything, but I got a lot of it cleaned up. So I cleaned up the head, and I'm going to show you guys that. But I'm going to just do a little trick here. And so the head's cleaned up, and my trick is is I chuck this up in the vise, uh, excuse me, in the drill in the drill hand drill, and we're going to put a little bit of valve grinding compound on here. It's old. Whoop. It's old. It's very old, guys, and there's a lot of extra water in here. Anyway, so we're going to, is a trick, put a little bit of valve grinding compound on it. Okay, and just very carefully, right in and out, just very lightly. And I'll show you from this side, which I'll have to do with my left hand, and make sure you're on that. Just very carefully. I'm not really a lefty. And all you want to do is you're just cleaning off the carbon, and well, there's really no carbon on it, but they decarbonize it. But you're just kind of just prepping it, and you don't want to chuck this in hard. That should do it. And he was like, wow. I was like, we could do this. I said, I've never seen that before. I said, yeah, that's how I do it. It goes fast that way. So we're going to do this one now. Just grabbing the end carefully. And I like these chucks because they don't grab all that hard to begin with. Let's just take a little bit more of my compound here. Get it on there. we got plenty of compound, huh? So you don't want to get it into the valve guide. So, try to avoid that, but I'm going to just do this fast. Don't go too fast with the drill. You can hear it when it stops cutting. It goes... That should be enough. You don't want to cause any problems. Perfect. Look at that. Perfect. Okay, and let's check the seat. Seat looks good. My light burned out. Of course, everything freaking breaks. The seat looks really good. So we're going to put this to the side. Let's check this one. We're going to hose this off, and we're going to wash it. We just don't want any of the sand in it. It's just it's it's uh, an oxide. That looks perfect, guys. What do you think? 
see it? I don't know if I can see it. I know it doesn't focus well, but it looks perfect. So that's a little trick. That's all I needed to do. I'm going to clean up my stuff. All right, guys, let's put our little head back together. Let's get our a little, a little head. Let's get a little head. Let's get a head. Now, if this works out, I'll probably take this back apart and get a, a head gasket for it, which I, I'm sure it will work out. So, what we're going to do, I'm just going to put a little bit of, uh, this is two-stroke, with uh, two-stroke that's got oil in it, obviously, and it has a little bit of um, oil, two-stroke oil, and it's got a little bit of training fluid in it. We want something light. So that's our, that's our, this one in my left hand is the exhaust, this is the intake. Okay, so let's put our intake here. Looks good. There's a little oil, light oil down there. And that's not getting stuck in, on a valve stem anymore. And let's drop a spring down on it. I'm holding it with one hand. And I've got a finger holding the valve up. And this is slotted. Okay. So we're just going to push that down and pull it over. And that's it. And then it gets, when we're done, okay, it gets the, uh, there's a tip on it. It goes a valve tip. So they call it a lash cap. And this is the exhaust valve. So let's put the keeper. This is why it gets. This is why it's so easy for the valve to hang up. Okay. And I can feel it now. It's it's moving. It's moving right. Right. And that's going to seal really good. Okay. We're not going to have any problems with that, guys. It's going to work. I wish I had a, a new gasket for it. So. We're, gonna, we're not going to put the caps on yet because until we get everything assembled because we're going to lose them that way. So i got to get a pair of pliers and i got to bend this gasket seat up. But I'll be back in a bit and i got to go get the motor and find all my bolts and make sure they're all clean and get everything you know, laid out nice so we're ready. And uh, we'll be back in a bit and we'll start the assembly and hopefully we'll be able to mount it tonight at some point on one of the chassis that I have and do a test. Hey guys, I'm going I'm to run a tap down this because one of these bolts, I remember when I took it out, it was a bit of a problem. And it's really only at the very bottom, but we're going to make sure that these things are cleaned up right. So I'm going to run a tap, blow them out make sure everything is okay because when I do go to torque it and tighten it down I want to know that it's tight it's running all the way in there alright that took a little bit but uh, hold on, that's fine if it works okay I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the threads to the side. Um, it may not work because there was a lot of material that got pulled up from the bottom all the way up through and it may be a problem but we're going to find out in a very short minute. Let's spin this on. You know, I, I want to feel everything by hand because you know you know my, my attitude towards it. I want to take stuff off fine but you know even then why? If you're doing a lot, you know, I've worked on assembly lines, and I've worked production, and when you have the same repetitive task, absolutely, but you really want to know, when you're taking something off, is it getting stuck? And then what? Because with a power tool, you're never going to know that. So if you're doing four bolts, what do you, you got to spin that out? You know, the heat involved, especially with aluminum. It starts to get hot, guess what? Let's go. It'll go. And that's what happens. 
not worth it. How long does this take? Besides, get some finger strength. You know, it would be good other than just whacking it, rubbing one out. Okay, guys. <coughs> I got the parts. Um, part number. I got. I found the parts for it. And this is was from a yard man. And that's this 550EX. Anyway, it's a 550EX series. And head bolts, do it in three steps, 220 inch pounds max. So, I've got it to the first two steps, and so far the head bolts held. Let's see if we can get it all the way. Okay. going to do it. We're going to sneak it up. I think we're going to fail, but I'm tightening up a little bit more as we go. It's already up most of the way. But oh, that clicked in. Hold on. We're getting there. That one got it. getting close, I think. Hopefully it'll make it three full times because I'm going to do this again. Oh, that made it. That made it. Let's see if we have success. That made it. That made it. It's only four bolts. It's a little motor. That made it. Okay, guys, not bad. We did good. All right. But I'm going to uh, put this torque wrench away for now. We're going to come back and we're going to assemble the valve train. And I may do this on the other vise where it's a little easier for me to reach it. All right. So we'll be back in a bit. Okay, guys, I'm back. All right. So I like to use a little bit of lightweight oil when I put the flywheel on. I like to lube the seal. Okay. I'm going to just lube the threads and a little bit of the shaft. Now, Kohler, actually, sorry, Honda, and you can use a little bit of your two-stroke, too, says no, okay? I would not put any kind of thick oil on here, but a very, very light coating. Make sure it's clean. Um, you can get a little bit of rust on the shaft, and that'll be a problem. Okay, make sure it's all clean. And I'm just gonna I just I wipe it off, okay, but I use it to make sure it's clean, make sure that seal is lubed, and don't forget your drip key. And I don't know if you guys can see, I don't want the camera too close because then you're gonna I'm gonna have a hard time working, but we might be able to move it in a little closer. Just to try to get it to stay, and you gotta have to get it so that the key is kind of in the right spot and move it around until it bottoms out. Alright. Hopefully it'll stay. Alright, let's see. Not sure how I want to do this. Let's try something. I can use a clamp or something, but or whatever. Oh, that's not working. Um, you know, on the body. It's not permanent, so it's just enough. That's it. I just hooked it around. Okay, and you just want it on there enough so that you don't have a problem. That's all I did. Okay, just hooked it with some heavy wire, coat hanging, or whatever. All right, now and, and tighten this up a little bit. I think that, that that's a little bit further. Just put a little bit more grease on it. Let's try. 
try again. Getting late, so I don't want to do too much more. Feels like it's just about on there, but the, you know the, the the key should be up higher in my book. It should be damn near close to the top of the threads, but it won't do that. That's it. Okay. I would bring the key up a little bit further. Just a little bit further from where it is. That's real close. I think it was closer the first time. Let's check it again. Yeah, let's bring it up a little closer. That's it. Now the key's perfect. Let me show you. That's where it should wind up. See, it's flush. Flywheel's all the way down. Try a few different angles so that you, you don't get... And that'll fit flush. This is down all the way, and that'll fit flush when we put the, the, the washer and the, the clutch on and all that. All right, now, that I think is over here. I don't think it only goes one way. Then this big spacer, which also isn't a, makes it uh, a line, and then put the nut on. Okay, I'm going to impact this down, and I'm not going to go that heavy. Actually, let me go find out what size that is. I think I know what size it is. And we'll be done with that part. <coughs> Again, starting by hand. And these are, by the way, that's a, that's a, start things by hand. That's a trick for mechanics and people that maybe just get into something that have no formal training or haven't been around anybody. They wouldn't know that. You guys might, but. The average person would not know that. You know, they take a power tool and they're like, run it in! Run it home! No. Bad idea. Always. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going up to the full 500 foot pounds, that's for sure. So, I tuned it down. Okay. Let's just uh, give it a little snug. It. It's down. You don't have to go gorilla on it. No reason to get freaking Korean on it. Now, okay. Now let's turn it up this way. that one more time. I always like to do these seals with a light lubricant. But then it swells them up and cleans them out. So we're going to go real careful here. Alright, till you make sure it's bottomed out. Alright, and you'll know. Alright, so let's grab uh, let's grab our lash caps. I'm going to blow them out a little bit. There's no debris. Now, you want to make sure the lash caps are going to stay on. And this is why it's a good idea to have some white grease. So you can use assembly lube, but put a little bit on the tips. Make sure that these lash caps stay on. And if there's lubricant, that lash cap goes on. That okay, lash cap goes on. And we're going to put on. Put a little bit of lubricant on the top. top. Lubricate all the way around. Let me just check my camera. You want me to raise it up a little bit, guys? 
to make sure you can get everything I'm doing. Same thing here. A little bit there. Okay, a little bit inside. Alright, so the longer rocker is going to go up the top. That's your exhaust valve. Shorter rocker looks like it's your intake. So we got a torque. Torx. What size is it? I think it is a 10, a T10. So let's run these in. Make sure there's lubricant on the threads. I think this is 10 millimeter. So let's go get a 10 millimeter socket. And we're going to run them in too. Like why are we always looking for a 10 millimeter? Why is it always the thing that you can't find? Let's take the set screw up. Okay, and run these down. So you take the clearance out. All right, now there's no clearance. We don't know where we are, all right? So what we need to do next, we have no idea where TBC is or anything. Typically, okay, the magnets are up, so usually she fires in this position. All right, so this is intake. All right. And this is exhaust over here. And the keyway is right in this realm here. And over here. So let's see what we got. So if we spin the motor, let's see what kind of action we get. All right, there you go. You got a valve, and that's intake. Uh, hold on, that's, that's exhaust going down. Here comes intake. All right, so she's pulling fuel, coming up towards the stroke. All right. So now she's coming towards compression, and everything is loose at this point. All right. Let's run this down a little bit more. All right. She's just starting to relax that exhaust valve. So she's pushing exhaust out. Going to swing around. There goes exhaust again. Pushing exhaust out, coming up to fire um, to pull intake fuel in. The intake comes up. All right. <clears throat> so she's th this one should be down below because it's sucking intake. We should be coming up to fire. And interestingly enough, this exhaust valve opened a little bit probably to purge it and now we should be firing so somewhere right here this should be top dead, I can feel it, this should be top dead center very close to it very very close to it and this is where your firing is so somewhere around here and there's exhaust alright so somewhere right around here There is no valve over it. Three to five max. It's cold. So let's put three on it. Let's keep it tight. Let's put three on it. How are we doing? Can I see you? You see me? Let's put three. Let's check. Okay. There you go. There's your three. Okay. So let's, let's hold it. Let's hold it with our wrench. And run this down. Run the center down. Okay. Let's check it. Feels okay. Feels like a tight three. Alright, so let's back it off a little bit. Just a little. 
That's a nice three. All right, let's tighten up the center. That's good. Let's feel it. That's nice. Okay, so let's pull it in by coming. We're gonna go. We're gonna go to the right against the uh, the set screw. Just a sneak. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. A little bit more, just a sneak. Going and tightening it with this, the set screw comes down. It's a nice tight three right there. That's beautiful. Let's repeat this one here. Okay, she's tight. Just sneak it in. Let's get this uh, set screw going. Set screw's tight. How's this feel? Feels good. Let's sneak it in. That's nice. That's probably closer to two. You're good. That's it. Now, I gotta get a pair of pliers or something because I. I had to bend this, couldn't get it off, but we're going to bend that right. Nothing that a little RTV will, will caress. That's nice, we're going to put a little RTV in that. You know, sorry for the lousy camera angles, but there's not much I can do about that. I think you're better off if you smear this on and walk away. In fact, I might actually do that because it's getting late. Just call it till tomorrow because you're you're asking for a lot. And I don't like to have the. I want to make a gasket, not not glue this thing down permanent like. And that's what happens if you don't. If you're rushing, and so we're going to leave this on there, and it is getting late, and I would like to take a shower and be human again. So, let's take a look at the coil. I'm ready for a coil on this thing. This one I had, I think it's the right one. I don't know. It's certainly more modern. So, I've had both of them. I put them away. Let's see. I don't know if you can see uh, this gauge, but 5.58K. That's beautiful. Anything under 5 or 6 is good. If it's around 5, that's fine. Anywhere in that range, you're good to go. All right, now I, hopefully you can see that. Okay, and so where where am I going? Well, I put the negative. You know, it doesn't really matter, but I put the negative lead on here. I cleaned up the coil on the wire wheel, so I put it on here. We want to have good metal contact and the positive into the primary, and the primary is the plug side, and so that's what we have there. And then this is where the coil gets grounded to shut it off and we're basically getting the same reading so I want to show you that that's important you want that clean and we're going to test this coil which this says overhead valve uh, Briggs and that's probably from the motor that's outside it's all messed up the, the green lemon and we're going to do the same thing here we're going to clip this to the body and go inside the the primary and see this is eight point in change so probably a little bit more worn you know it is a slightly different coil and then we're going to go to the switch leg just to make sure and we get seven and change so you could see that the newer one is better um, but this is still working and still has life left in it so I'm going to try. I think let's see if we can fit the newer the, the newer one because that's more of a modern design. 
that should be the right coil. Most coils will tell you. And it says here, this side out. Now I can barely see that. And this side's a cylinder side. So you want to put it this way. I find very often the tab here goes down. Just very often, that's just what I find. So this comes in from this side. Guys, use a little assembly lube. lube. You're going to get, especially if you're torquing, you cannot get a proper torque value without lube. Period. It's never going to happen. Because the friction in the threads is what is what stops you. There's nothing wrong with doing this, actually taking that, sticking it in there like that. You see what I did? Nothing wrong with that. Lay it in there like that. Okay, and we're just going to tap it. Snug it up. So let's tighten it up. Don't blammo this in, you'll strip it. This is where I just use these, this uh, driver. And I just make sure it's tight. And I'll come back and I'll just give it a, a, a little tweak. And again, by hand. Oh, yeah. That's it. That's all she needs. All right. So I'm going to grab a couple of the parts. And we're going to see what's next on the agenda. I don't believe there's a gasket for this. If you want, you can put a little bit of an anti-seize. I'll use a little bit of uh, I'm going to use a little bit of lead compound on that, which is a good anti-seize. It won't come off. It's lead. It's got lead and oil. And no, it's not toxic. Don't eat it and don't burn it. The way you'll breathe it in, and you'll be fine. Don't eat it. Don't drink it. Don't stick it in a cut. You can wear gloves if you want. It's not necessary. It doesn't get absorbed through the skin. Yeah. It's also the same size as the standard. Remember, it's aluminum, so don't over tighten it. Don't tighten one more than the other either. Don't don't tighten one to the point where you've got it cinched home and then, and do the other. Do them equally. They're on stud bosses. See where I'm grabbing the wrench, so I don't put too much on it. This almost feels like it's going to strip, and that'll happen. <clears throat> Goes up because the carburetor is like that. I think that would that would kind of make sense. I don't know if that really does anything. pre-assembly just to figure this out I showed you before the orientation of this and let's see if I got it right okay so bracket this way this is the the way that it goes you can see that the adapter is behind the bracket bolted through the front now let's see if we can put on the linkages I'll do this one first to the governor and then this one I think I got it let's see feels like it push it back that's it it's on there okay it looks like it's on there now let's see if we got it right this is the tube uh, the vent tube up here. Now there's another spring. Let me get my glasses on. It's 
the spring. Hopefully you can see it. I'm going to lose the battery again. Now there's this spring. Now this has to pull against here. I believe that's where that spring goes. I think this spring goes here between these two, pulling on back on the governor. That would be my guess. Because when the governor is blowing, I think the governor is going to blow out, trying to open up the throttle. So, this pulls the throttle open. So that's full. This spring's pulling the throttle open, but the governor is going to try to, as it spins up, is going to try to blow it back. Now, if we're wrong, we'll find out. Okay, guys, we're almost done. You know, if the, so apologize if the camera angle is not always that good. That's why I pull out. That's what she said. That's what he said. All right. So the next step is we've got to cover this. Well, that's your pull starter. And this baby gets just this plastic cover. Kind of cheesy. It's a very light motor. Now, we'll take this off when we get everything done. Uh, well, we might have to take it off now. Um, depending upon what happens here with this, we may actually have to... Yeah, see, this gets covered. Okay, guys, I got the cabling on. I had it lubricated. It's an old cable. Let's give it a shot. Okay, let's see what we get. Oh, look at that. Okay, and that's basically dry. There's really nothing in there. You got over 70 pounds, 75 pounds. Okay, you got a good 75 pounds of that. This baby will run. Let me put a plug in it, get some fuel in it, and we'll be back in a bit. Set up over here. Let's see. Let's see. Will it start? Will it run? No throttle or anything on it. Let's see what we do. <laughs> Let it blow off its smoke. There's enough oil in there for it to run. There's going to be smoke in there. We don't know. It's never run before, so it might be a smoker. Maybe no good. But a lot of them do this when I first start them. So he's running at a nice idle, at a nice, at a nice RPM. Should have enough oil in it. We're going to let it run a little bit. Let it cool down when we start it. Nice easy pull. Yeah, it's not as much smoke right now. All right, I think I got the show started. We started right up. As the muffler warms up, it'll really pull that show off. It's a little bit much on the choke. I'll